Right. Which then is a nice segue to this notion of mindfulness. Yes. Right? And uh, traditionally, as we have defined on the show for a long time, um, and it's appropriate to, to briefly revisit it, mindfulness is, is operationally defined as paying attention in the moment mm-hmm. on purpose without judgment. Right. Yeah. But as we've continued to evolve and we've um, become more laser focused Mm -hmm. and we really through our own research for MIT Mm -hmm. encapsulated a clearer vision, a stronger mission and philosophy of who we are. Right. We're now starting to present ourselves in what we affectionately refer to as mindfulness 2.0. Yep. What's that? Mindfulness 2.0 is not just looking at in the moment, paying attention on purpose, on purpose, right? Uh, non-judgmentally. I think all of that range true, right? We're still pulling from those, the foundation, right? We like to say we stand on the, the shoulders of giants. I believe that might've been Edison. That might've been Franklin. Um, but I know a famous inventor, one of the biggies did one say that, right? I stand on the shoulders of giants and there are giants within the field and they have established a great groundwork, but now it's time for that evolution, that next step of understanding. It's no longer, I need to escape to be mindful. It's, can I be mindful in the most challenging of situations? Can I challenge myself, uh, to be mindful when, I'm not supposed to be, right? When I am overwhelmed. And mindfulness 2.0 is giving you the giving you the tools, understanding it through visualization, through data to understand yourself a little bit more um, innately, right? Intimately, right. right? Looking kind of behind the curtain, right? There's a lot of things that we can see from a subjective perspective, but through this through data you can kind of see it a little bit more objectively. Right. I see mindfulness 2.0 as we're talking as really a reframing Mm -hmm. of the mindful moment. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is to pay attention on purpose um, without judgment um, in the moment. All of those things that are driving us to what's happening now. Mm. What's happening now. What's happening now. Forget about the past don't concern yourself with the future. Mm-hmm. What's happening right now? This is a moment, mm-hmm. which is very, very true. But I think mindfulness 2.0 is really about, what are you not, not, not nodding your head on? I think I'm What going, are you thinking? Just my mind, I think, is very, is very similar in terms of this thinking, but I want you to no, finish no. before I jump into Go it. Go right ahead. Jump. Uh, I think you're talking about like not just mindfulness being in the moment, but mindfulness being everywhere. Yes. Right. All time. It is all time. Right. Right. And it's not about looking at the past as something to ignore or the future to be afraid of. It's to recognize that mindfulness is what you're learning from the past. Right. Not being afraid of it. Mindfulness is about looking to the future and yes. identifying that change is inevitable. Yes. And how you can adapt in the present moment is now what you're doing actively to set yourself up for that, to help yourself learn from the past and set yourself up. Because that phrase of in the moment, I think, encourages people too often to halt Mm. the application of said skill in past or future type moments. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I've done a lot of reading and and prior to to MindFlex LLC, I worked in a a, uh, smaller group practice that specialized in attention deficit. Right. And we would recommend readings Mm. and there was always a phrase that I remember was in the literature that we would try to educate parents regarding their children who had some type of attention deficit disorder. And it was the mind is built. It's wired to wander. Mm. Hmm. The mind is built wired to wander. It's very accurate, right? Because that can't be denied. And Truth be told, I think that's the big knock on mindfulness mm. of people who don't either get it, don't haven't really educated themselves about it, or they're quick to be like, ah, oh, yeah, because they, they label mindfulness into meditation. Right. Yes, there are mindful meditation practices. It's not the same as being mindful, right. just for the record. There is a difference. But they quickly discard the notion. Mm-hmm. 
and they remove themselves from it. Kind of like what we've talked about in past episodes of that specialized athlete that's just so damn good right. that that's just what they have. Mm-hmm. I can't possibly relate to that. So we put them in that specialized category. I think mindfulness in a large part has become um, part of that narrative. Yeah, right. yeah, that's for people that, that can meditate. Mm. Those are for the yoga-driven it's people. It's not for me. I can't do that. I can't do right. that. Right. right. And that's what it's in, in the moment, I think, so often is, is incredibly I threatening. I hate that word, can't, by the way. <laughs> Why do you hate the whole can't? Just It's just such a um, an out, right? It's, it's just a cop-out of just saying, I can't do that. It just is such a... Um, an unwillingness to to attempt to try to put a limitation on yourself it just diminishes your ability. it's a passive acceptance yeah you know it really is and i and I, I say passive because it's almost as if it's it, you're letting it envelop you yeah the moment but again to back, back to the 2.0 of of being mindful of a particular moment there's great value in that but i think through awareness that is more purposeful, that mm-hmm. is more intentional, that has um, information, real tangible information to suggest right. this is how you can vary and shift your world of perception mm-hmm. from the value of trying to get calm because I'm overwhelmed to put my gaze on something that is very important to me and shift that attention to then uh, fire my mind and my muscles simultaneously because that makes me more in sync. Mm. There is more purpose to what we are calling mindfulness 2.0, which is really chaos in the lab as you're bringing that full circle mind body connection it allows the person to say yes i am aware yes i am present but i am considering all things yes right it's just more all encapsulating yep and and i and i think in our own little world because we've made it very clear the difference between mental skills and mental strength is you are training right we are we are not assigning, mm-hmm. okay? We're not teaching. That's more traditional mental skills. Right. Mental strength training is training. Right. It's just that. It's you're coming to work out your mind. Yep. You're going to work up a mental sweat. Yep. Right. Physical, yeah, and in the physical sweat too. I've had multiple clients say, "Wow, I I actually like started right. to sweat when I was doing that." I was like, "Yes." That's exactly it. You yeah. are you burn calories while you're also your brain is an energy source. It's using power if you think about it. So it's us, utilizing cal- calories. And I'm not going to say you're going to lose a ton of weight uh, doing it, but right, you can you will gain a physical. You are straining yourself, right, to the point of challenge, to the point of I'm getting a workout, a mental workout, right, which builds the cognitive endurance, which builds the mental strength. You have to think about it as you're going to the gym. 